This is our uh, example problem of how we might use the ideal gas law to solve a problem. Anytime you have the ideal gas law and you have to, or I guess the first thing you want to know is do I need the ideal gas law? Is this an ideal gas law problem? So what I do is I read the problem and I say, is it changing? Am I going from one state to another? It says, what is the volume of one mole of gas at STP? It doesn't say we're changing, not going from a new volume to an old volume. It's just this is this is the moles, this is the pressure, this is the temperature, what is the volume? This is an ideal gas law problem. So first thing you've got to do is figure out, well, what is the formula that we're going to use? So we look and see what we're being asked. We're being asked for, to find the volume. So we know that the volume of an ideal gas is given by nRT over P. So uh, here's what we do. What we're going to do is we're going to take these things and we're going to plug them in. But we want to be really careful with units, particularly when we have the ideal gas law. The units are so important. So we're going to make a little conversion chart here to make sure that everything cancels out. And any time that we see something in the top on the formula up here, we're going to put it in the top down here. And if it's on the bottom, it's going to go in the bottom. So the first thing I see is N. N stands for moles. Uh, the problem says I have 1.00 moles. So I'm going to write 1.00 moles here. Save myself a lot of time by not writing ES. And uh, that goes up there. And then the next thing I get to is R. R is the ideal gas constant. So it's always the same thing, but I got to choose uh, which one I want to use. So I look at my pressure. The pressure given is standard. If it's standard pressure, that means I can use any uh, unit I want. So I'm going to choose, anytime I give a, have a choice, I'm going to use this number. The reason I'm going to use this number is when I go later to plug in the pressure, I can plug in a 1 instead of a 101.325, and that's more convenient. So notice what I do here with the units. It's liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin, so since I start out on top, I just write liter dot atmosphere per, per means go to the bottom, mole Kelvin. If you ever work with a formula that has R on the bottom in the formula up here, you would uh, kind of flip that. You would have the 0.0821 on the bottom and uh, the liter atmosphere on the bottom and the mole Kelvin on the top. But that's not what we have. We have R on the top, so we're going to leave it the way I had it. Okay, so the next thing I see in my formula, we've taken care of N, we've taken care of R, so now we're up to T. T is given as standard, STP stands for standard temperature and pressure, so we're going to use standard temperature, which is 273 kelvins. And so we've got the top all taken care of, and now we can put P on the bottom. Bottom is pressure, that's standard, the problem says that's standard as well, and it's 1.0 atmospheres. And now we've put everything into the formula, into our chart. Now why are we using a chart at all? Well, here's why. What we're going to do now is we're going to look for things that cancel, and hopefully everything will cancel except for a volume, because we want the answer to be a volume. So I see mole on top and bottom, those cancel. I see atmosphere on bottom and top, those cancel. I see Kelvin on bottom, Kelvin on top, those cancel. And uh, I see liter on top, but there's no liter on the bottom, which means that liter does not cancel. So I, when I work this out, when I plug through the formula here, uh, I'm going to get an answer of liters. And so if I do that, I take I take the 1.00 times the 0 0.0821 times the 273 uh, and divide it by the only number on the bottom is our 1. And when you do that, when you're older, you'll understand why I knew this already. It's 22.4 liters. That is uh, the molar volume of a gas. Uh, so I actually didn't have to do that. I didn't have to work it out. I know that one mole of a gas at STP always occupies 22.4 liters. Uh, it's one of those shortcuts for gas law stoichiometry sometimes we use. So in any case, that is how you do it. You would uh, start by finding your formula plug things into the charts, make sure everything cancels out, and then work out the math.